Do you remember when I said that some systems are really a pain to design because they have their fat finger inside everything else? Well, if you don't, you can go check my previous video about it. But for now, let's just say that story all are one of those really annoying thing to design. Hey everyone, I'm Umbrus and welcome to another episode. I'm not an expert at story all, but I've done it like once or twice professionally and I've had good feedback on the way I implemented it. So I figured, well, I could talk about it a little bit and show you how I did it in my um, indie dev game, Solar Rogue. Story all have some unique issues that make them kind of interesting to implement. The first one is that usually they want to disable some core mechanics that you probably didn't think you would need to disable, like the classic where, you know, you want the player to practice shooting, but you don't want him to move. So you disable the movement keys, but you have to still enable like the look around and the shooting. Well, this is not necessarily something you thought about your game. Like I want the player to be able to move, but I don't want him to be able to shoot or open his inventory or go in the menus and it can be kind of tricky to implement. The second thing is kind of the opposite, is like sometimes you're gonna need some very specific mechanics only for the tutorial. For example, you'll want like an invulnerable NPC that you can shoot forever, or you'll want to be able to highlight some buttons or put markers for the tutorials inside the UI. You need prompts and stuff like that that are specific to the tutorial, which means you, it's a lot of work to implement all these new features only for the tutorial. And then the worst issue of all, is that tutorials are just a big, big source of unexpected edge cases. Because during the tutorial, there's always going to be user trying to do what you didn't expect them to do. So like player, you know, quitting in the middle of a dialogue box or something, player finding ways to kill your uh, NPC that was giving you the tutorial, or um, just plain old walking away from the tutorial and you have to handle all of these cases in a beautiful way and it's not always easy. And the worst is you probably won't be able to think about all of those edge, edge cases. So you have to find a way to fall back gracefully when something unexpected happened. And that also leads me to the, my last point is that you need some kind of way to track the progress of the player through the tutorial because you don't want him every time he logs in to replay the same part of the tutorial or be stuck in an infinite loop of the same stupid tutorial. So you need a way to know and design how you're gonna play the tutorial and how you're gonna cut it up in little sections that are kind of atomic in itself. To be honest, some of those issues you really can only fix with a good game design and a really good planned out tutorial. And I'm not here to tell you how to design a good tutorial because I'm not necessarily the best game designer out there, but I'm a programmer and as a programmer, I'm curious about what kind of structure and code design we can do to try to avoid the most common headaches. And to this end, I like to think of the tutorial as a series of gates. That means a couple of things. First, a gate is locked until all the conditions are met for the player to enter this gate which means you can chain multiple gates together with a series of different conditions and the tutorial will progress this way. Then a gate is atomic, which means that once a player has entered the gate, if anything goes wrong, you just bring the player back to the beginning of the gate. And the last thing is that a gate, once it's completed, will be shut and locked forever so that the, you're sure that the player is not going to fall back into the tutorial again by mistake or something. In a complex game, these each of these points have to be really well fleshed out. You need a, like a really complex system for managing the conditions and the, the, the gates and, and the opening and the closing and the locking and everything. But uh, in Solar Rogue, I managed to do something kind of like it, but you know, in a simplified way. So let's just go into Solar Rogue and I'll show you a little bit how I implemented the few tutorial prompts I have at the beginning of the game. The first thing I did is that I went back into my permanent save. If you haven't seen the video last week, I explained why I needed a permanent save file for my game. And in there, I set up a tutorial section. And this tutorial section for now contains really only one thing that's important. It's an array of IDs. And each of those IDs represent the gate. And when the ID is in the list, it means this gate has been completed and it's been locked forever. 
But the interesting part is that these gates ID can also be used as conditions for the next gate, which means I can chain sequentially all of those uh, tutorial parts if I want to. As usual, I added a system node to manage the tutorial, so it's a bit of a mess because there's a lot of stuff in there, but at least it's contained into one single GD script and it all has to do with tutorials. And the way it works is that once again, on the on ready, I connect to a bunch of signals from different part of the system. Like for example, I like the users to get a tutorial when it encounters some items for the first time. So I register on the on scanner updated, which tells the player about the new items entering its visibility. And when one of the item I'm interested in comes in, I check to see if all the other conditions are met. And if so, then I start a tutorial by displaying a prompt or highlighting some buttons or doing some stuff like that. And then when the prompt is done or when the player has clicked on the button or whatever conditions I have to close the gate, then I get another callback and I close the gate by writing it into the save file. And it's as simple as this for the tutorial part. Now the next part is that I had to add a bunch of stuff to make the tutorial. So the first thing I did is that I needed a new prompt because a lot of my UIs are just static windows or at least they have very defined purpose. But for the tutorial, I needed a way to display any kind of random message I wanted for the tutorial. So I created this new prompt window for the tutorial that can receive as a parameter in its initialization any kind of string of text and then it'll just display this text. And one of the tricky thing I had to do with this is because at first I just put it as a really big window so that I could fit any amount of text I wanted, but some tutorial parts have only like one line and in a big window, it looked kind of weird. So I tried to do some kind of magic where I uh, estimate the size of the window I'm gonna need. It's not perfect, but at least the window changes a little bit of size depending on how big the text is. And it looks much better this way, I think. Then another thing I had to add is some highlights for the buttons and stuff like that. So that when you're clicking on a button or when the tutorial says, please click on this button, then I flash this button. And this was done fairly simply with just an animation player and I just animate the color of the button. My tutorial system doesn't need to keep a reference to all the buttons in the game, but it just triggers a global event and this global event has a name and the buttons receive these events and if they see their name in the event, then they just start playing their highlight. And then to avoid any complexities, uh, the tutorial is just considered completed as soon as the is event is launched and I don't have any callbacks when the button is actually clicked. When the button is clicked, it just clears all the highlight in the game. And to be honest, this is a little bit simplistic. Um, in more complex tutorial, I would definitely need to be able to chain multiple button, like click here, then click here, then click here. And to do that, I would need a callback whenever a button is clicked so that I can complete the gate at that time and launch the next gate and keep going like this. But uh, this is seriously really complicated stuff. Like I kind of gave up when I got into the uh, converter uh, inventory tutorial because ideally I would have liked to highlight the crafting list first, then tell you to click on it. And then once you click on it, tell you to click on the materials you want to select and highlight that material and then click on the button. And But this would have required me to spend days implementing highlights in every single UI elements in my game. And seriously, it, it just seemed like such a lot of work for not that much in the end, but that's just how it is. If you want a good story, then it's, it's a lot of work and it, it needs to be implemented in every single facet of your game. And that's what I mean when I keep saying that story will have their little fat finger inside everything in your game. The last kind of important thing in that story is that you don't want to spam the player that knows what he's doing. So you need a way to turn off tutorial or like dismiss the tutorial or something like that. And well, it was fairly easy to implement. I just, I already had a settings menu. So I just went into the settings menu. I added a little checkbox where you can disable it. Ideally, I probably would need to add this checkbox in my tutorial prompts so that the player doesn't even have to go in the settings. And right now it's a little bit weird because Turning on and off the tutorial is just gonna reset it to the beginning, but ideally I'd probably want a button like 
clear story all or restart story all and then a button to just disable the story all but that doesn't reset necessarily the story all to the beginning that that would be good if my story all was like hours long or something but it, it's only a couple of prompts right now so it's not so bad even if you start over from the beginning it's over in like five minutes and also my story all is integrated in the main game which means it doesn't block the flow of the game and this is another important thing i consider there's two approach to making good story -offs. The first one is the hand-holding where you have a specific level and you disable all the other mechanics in the game and you force the player to grow to go through very specific steps in the story -off. And the second method is the more maybe natural way of doing story -off, where you let the player explore the world but when he needs some hand-holding or if he needs some guidance then you show him some prompts or you tell him or you suggest to him some stuff he should maybe be doing. Um, personally, I prefer the second method and that's what I implemented in Solar Rogue. I actually wait for the player to meet a certain set of condition while he's playing the normal game. And when these conditions are met, I prompt him with a couple of different uh, story all and I think it's just better this way because it happens when he needs it and it gives him more chance to remember it, where if I introduced all the concepts at the very beginning of the game, maybe an hour later when he's in the game, he's not gonna remember what he saw in the first story all, and I think it's just better this way. But honestly, either methods are fine, and it's not necessarily easier to implement one or the other, because the first one, it's easier to control the actions of the player, but you have to create a whole bunch of code to handle all the disabling of the mechanics and you have to create a whole level just for the story all. Where in the second method, maybe you have less of this kind of limitation to implement, but then you have a lot of these condition stuff and a lot of these edge cases to handle and it can be just as difficult for either methods to implement. And finally, if you know about some outstanding story examples in some of your favorite games, I'd really like you to leave a comment below this video and tell me about it because I'm very curious to see what other games have done for story and, you know, see if it could be applied to my game and improve the overall feeling of the game like this. And that's gonna be it for this week, so I hope you have a really nice Christmas and a Happy New Year, and see you guys in my next episode. Bye!